Good afternoon, or what is a warm, bright and blustery day. It is Thursday the 20th of April and I've got a nice hot cup of tea and a box which I think pretty much going to completely finish but I'm definitely going to continue unboxing. Now, I've been through this several times and I have pulled out filling in the blanks which is a guide to populating hex crawls and uh, Mega Dungeon uh, Monster Manual, which is all of the monsters drawn from Greg Gillespie's Mega Dungeons, Barra Maze, Darrow Deep, that sort of thing. More Into the World, a high level resource for OSR games. And the aforementioned Darrow Deep, which is the nearest I've seen to sort of like an old school Renaissance take upon Moria, Mines of Moria. Uh, how to write adventure modules that don't suck, that's from Goodman Games. That's a pull out. Uh, six seasons in Sartar. Now I'd love to do another unboxing of this, but I've already done one. And then <clears throat> in the midst of playing this, and it's fantastic. Uh, after that, all oh, petty gods, interesting book of um, deities and spells and um, servitors and that so on for your old school Renaissance, Renaissance games. So lots of different gods. I have Mouse Ritter, I'm going to look at that, I love Mouse Ritter, um, and what I've got is completely different, and this is the last thing in here, um, and uh, it is Uncover the Secrets of the Ancients, for Anton Cthulhu from Modifius uh, Entertainment, it is Shadows of Atlantis, issue number four the, in the new series of um, the role-playing game uh this is book four first campaign uh it's for using the acton cthulhu with for the d2 sorry 2d20 system um so shadow vs atlantis the hunt for a terrifying super weapon lost in the mists of history the hunt for a terrifying super weapon lost in the mists of history uh embark on an epic global globe spanning adventure that takes you from the dawn of the secret war to the fall of the ancient of ancient atlantis itself it is the summer of 1939, and as storm clouds gather over Europe, a word, re word reaches the eyes of a curious case of um, Dr. Um, Botho Ehrlichman, a noted academic and scholar. As the events around him and his mysterious disappearance begin to unfold, it, draw it, it, it draws allied, angels, a allied agents into a global web of intrigue as they start to assemble clues which point to a legendary artifact which was shattered into its component parts during the fall of Atlantis. But the angels and agents' endeavours have not gone unnoticed, and now they face a race against time to thwart the machinations of a secret in Nazi occult force, hell-bent on acquiring this lost knowledge for themselves. With the pieces of this lost relic, the Nazis intend to construct a super weapon which will give the Third Reich a decisive advantage in the coming conflict. But will this team of heroic allied agents prevail against the, the might of the Nazi occult or will a disaster strike from beneath the shadows of Atlantis? An epic, multi-part, globe-spanning adventure completely reworked, remixed and revised for Acton, um, uh, Acton Cthulhu 2D20. Uh, the perfect way to introduce players to the Secret War and Acton Cthulhu itself with a campaign full of action, intrigue and rip-roaring adventure. Features eight major self-contained chapters that take players from Vienna to Rome, Cairo, Nepal, India and Persia. Finishing in the icy wastes of Greenland and with an exclusive new episode set in British Honduras. Travel through time to witness the fall of Atlantis and save the world from the Nazi occult menace. A wealth of new art and maps bring this blockbuster campaign to life. Requires Acton Cthulhu 2D20 core books to play. So that's a big blurb on the back there. But it's certainly selling it, it's selling it. Um, and we've got this great cover on there, action packed, sort of like, you know, as, as, as the player character, as a sort of like the, um, as the Nazis assault Atlantis. So definitely got time travel involved. So that's gonna be fun. Um, and we have, uh, scenes on the inside page basically from ancient Atlantis using ancient um, Atlantis technology um, and that figure's already that's already built into the background of Acton Cthulhu um, it is uh, there is one faction that uses um, Atlantean technology and there we have the player characters acting you know using the mythos to help themselves using petty magic um, uh, to survive um, So, um, we get into uh, page of contents. Um, at, uh, 
This is originally written by Lynn Hardy, but it's been, and that was for a Call of Cthulhu 6th edition. This is the edition for 2D, the 2D20 system. We've got the pages of the um, contents. Um, and then welcome to Atlantis, an explanation of what the campaign is, what, what, what it's about, what is Act on Cthulhu, um, and how this compares with Plato's Atlantis. Um, so welcome to Atlantis. Um, and um, and then discussion plays as Atlantis, it's lost history, um, the campaign background, um, and the device itself is going to be, it's called the um, Palladion. Um, that's what they're trying to, the, the part which the player characters are trying to find uh, and prevent the Nazis getting hold of. And of course we have Project Atlantis um, for, you know, your Nazis attempting and then we've got a guide to use in the book. Um, and, uh, um, so, yeah. Um, campaign overview, pre parent um, campaign um, overview, pre, ca pre campaign preparations, creating characters, use of the X card. So, we've got advice uh, and, and details to help you, the game master set the campaign up for the players, use of the X card. Veils and lines and what elements that go into a session zero, um, so on. And then we very quickly we get into the first chapter, Vienna. Um, where in basic strange request where brings the play character to Vienna. Um, and, uh, and so on, and we've got lots of handouts and so on and stuff for the play characters to grab, hold on, and find. Um, so on so you know it, one of the key parts of any uh lovecraftian horror uh, role-playing game is the investigation so you get lots of clues and so on um but, uh, and vienna isn't a city that's really been very, very much um visited by um lovecraftian investigative horror uh, you're really looking at things like the auction from the asylum and other tales it's really one of the few times it's visited um so and then, um, you know, we've got this bit of a link there on to, to, to Rome. You've got that little red line kind of going, you know, across Europe. Um, presumably the player carriers are going to be taking the train because that's the most convenient route to take. But you could be flying, of course, you know, in true Indiana, Stones, Indiana Jones fashion. We have the Rome chapter. That's mission two. A nice map of the streets of Rome. Um, and again, uh, Rome itself isn't, is, isn't visited very often, except really obviously in Cthulhu Invictus. But, but um, you know, uh, it's interesting to visit Rome at this, at this period. Um, I think Tatters the King visits um, Milan. Um, and of course, you've got uh, Horror Lyric Express, I think, who visits Trieste. Uh, but Rome itself very rarely outside of Cthulhu Invictus. Plus, you know, you've got the idea of, 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 of operating under another fascist regime, um, you know, uh, which can be very different to the one under Ge uh, and, uh, uh, to Germany and, and Austria at the time. Um, so, uh, you know, throw through Rome, and we've got a dig site to explore, um, and, you know, because obviously, you know, this is looking after lost art, lost artifacts. They're trying to recover them, and of course that means archaeology. And archaeology is always fun. And that's going to unleash strange creatures. So we basically got like serpent men there, the Ophidian enemy, and, of course, and a underground grotto. And the one thing with the two D twenty system, of course, is it, it's kind of pulpy in style and to play. Mission three, Egypt and Cairo. Uh, um, Cairo, and we're gonna, you're going to go by boat very, very probably, um, and uh, yeah, Cairo and Egypt have been visited lots of times by Call of Cthulhu, um, and you can easily delve back into that that content. You know, there's the Cairo source book. Um, there's Master Narth. The tap has details on Egypt as well. As to the Master Narth Companion, if you are fortunate to have one, and you've got the Hathor complex, so you've got 
big tombs and um, temple complexes of ancient Egypt to explore and make use of, um, encountering this strange beast, um, which is Snake Guardian. Um, and you've got sort of like, you've also got that element of the pulp aspect of, uh, you know, Indiana Jones, uh, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, so on. And you've got a classic kind of car chase scene like that, which um, is fun. And then Nepal, I mean, you know, you're almost backtracking along the route of Indiana Jones in the Lost, the Raiders of the Lost Ark um, there. Um, there you'll definitely kind of have to pl have to fly and you've got that sense of that, the, the, the flying there um, and they you know essentially you're encountering the um, last the the, 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 um, the llamas the head of the, the Buddhist monasteries um, but, uh, and then um, we get into go south into India um, and India is not a, is, is in general not a campaign setting that is again not really very well explored in Call of Cthulhu. There's a complete campaign sort of set there. There are a few scenarios, but they're far and few between. One of the, camp, the campaigns um, at, is written by Lynn Hardy, so that's worth tracking down if you want a more classic kind of Call of Cthulhu campaign set in India. Um, and there's a couple of scenarios like Time of the Sands of India from Goodman Games. So you've got temple complexes again, similar to in, to investigate, and they're still be operated. And you um, strange kind of demons, uh, and then north uh, or uh, north um, west um, into Persia. Um, so you know um, again another region a little explored. There's the root. So yeah, we are literally, I mean, that's almost like a scene out of uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Um, you know, and we were um, moving along that kind of similar territory, but again, we have something like that great device um, at, uh, um, um, operated by um, is um, uh, uh, um, by the Nazis, um, and then the bonus section is British Honduras. Um, but, uh, which means uh, hopping across the Atlantic, but again, that's going to bring you closer to the region where Atlantis is supposed to be, or traditionally supposed to. So, said to said to be um, um, and again it's it, the region is sort of like similar you know to that of um, uh, again uh, India Jones and the crystal this time the crystal skull of course so you can play out that element if you want to Uh, and then North Greenland and Atlantis for the final mission. Um, but, uh, but this is basically having popped back across the, Atla the Atlantic to set, I mean, setting up for Southampton, setting sail for Greenland, which at this time it would have been um, a Danish possession. And then we have a Nacht Wolf base. Nacht Wolf is the faction involved in the campaign. They use Atlantean technology uh, to create super weapons um, and they harness their the, the ancient technology. Um, and then we've got the chance really to escape back into the past, encounter Atlantis. Um, but, uh, we've got kind of a classic map of Atlantis, including an Atlantis temple. Um, and then so comes to a close and then we have appendices so 
to adversaries and antagonists. Sadly, not always illustrated, um, but we've got the Crom Croak, which is, that's fantastic. Man, that's, that's, there's some fantastic artwork in this book. You know, that's really fantastic because you've got this flying boat attempting to, to fly away from it. It's quite subtle, but it's a nice kind of sort of feel, nod back to, uh, a little bit to um, Beyond the Mounts of Bagus, the sort of like flying toward, uh, um, towards or away from the ancient. Uh, an ancient place. New tools, tools of the trade, tomes, spells, um, artifacts, that sort of thing. Story seeds, extra things that the game master can bring into the campaign if she so desires. Uh, handouts, um, always great for your players, you know, things for them to, 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 to um, basically worry over, pick up, pick up clues from, and then we've got the NPC, the, basically the player characters at the end, sample player characters. So one, two, three, four, okay, uh, there they are, all together. Um, so that yeah, just four player characters, pre generated player characters, but it's easy to play, create your own player character from the rules in 2D20 system using the player's handbook. Anyway, that is Act on Cthulhu Shadows of Atlantis um, from Divius Entertainment using the 2D20 system. Um, hope you've enjoyed this unboxing in the nook. If you have, then please do click on the like button down below. And of course, if you've got any comments or feedback, I do appreciate you taking the time to post those. And lastly, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the Nook, where you'll see me out here um, with a box containing um, a book or game which I will unbox and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge for roughly 10 minutes or so, all of course accompanied by a nice hot cup of tea, then please do hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks again for watching another unboxing in the Nook. I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.